I'll do the intro at the end. I'm going to start off with the easy one, which is literally holding it with your hand and tacking it on. If this was only a hockey stick, this method will take no time and the pack will be done in a minute or two. I like to call this the road method, but for me, it's the most easiest method. Make sure I'm on the road. It's all about setup. Get everything in the right position. The torque is easy to grab. Out of the way, I've already got my space up. So what I'm going to do, jam it between my legs, get my pipe alignment, use my spacer, rub around it until it's good, and then I'm going to tack the top, and then shim the bottom, and then tack the bottom. Hello everybody and welcome back to Arc One Welding. Turns out I forgot to film my intro so I'm having to do it now. So yes, join me on my welding journey where I tackle all sorts of welding but for the most part I am a MIG pipe welder from the UK and I like to share what I do for work. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Um, if you enjoy a video like this remember hit the subscribe button leave a like all that sort of good stuff but i have a narrow i have a narrow amount of time that i can talk before i talk in the video so enjoy the rest of it and i will catch you in the next one there we go once once the first tack is on you can relax a little bit it's not going nowhere checking the pipe alignment pretty sweet pretty pretty sweet now, time for the shim. Here's the shim. Simple. Checking the level. This says level. Put it this piece of right here. Again, this needs to open up quite a bit. So this is going to be a huge gap. Because I'm lazy, I'm going to weld this big gap. But what I should do now is tack the bottom when the gap is smaller and then cut the tack on top, bring it closer, then weld it that way. It's easier to cut a, a gap bigger than to fill a gap, but I'm going to be lazy today. So, a little bit left. And I, I like to weld with gravity, so I'm going to squeeze this pipe in and rotate it and use gravity to help me with my roots. This would be the best way to do it, but it's extra steps. What I would have usually have done, when it's up like that, I would look down the gap. I would look down the gap and I would split the difference on both sides. As long as the gap on both sides are equal, sometimes I use this, I jam it in and I use my finger as a guide. That's pretty even, so I'm going to tack this up now. But, like I said before, if you want to be, I, I could say professional, you would level it off, but that's extra steps. So, let me quickly elaborate on why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. 
So basically, I am a price welder. I get paid on completion of this pipe. And this pipe here, I'm expected to get it done in, in maybe one hour for, for it to be worth my while. So I'm rushing everything and I'm trying to do everything as fast as, and as efficient as possible to maximize the amount of money that I make, really, while still not doing a bad job. So yeah, this side is done. It's fully tacked up. I trust that. Now, like I said, if this was just a hockey stick, you can flange it now and be done. But this job here has two elbows, so the other side has an elbow facing the same direction. Now, because, because there's already this elbow here, making this pipe here fix in a certain orientation and then i need to put that one on to this one so i can't put it on the way i did just a second ago so that one there i'm going to show you the second method which is the the way you're probably used to using these cans as props to put the flat um, the elbow on so i'll level this one here off completely Pipe level. Double check. The whole thing's moving all over the place, which is not helpful. So if you look closely at this, it's touching the line on the right, but if you look at the gap underneath here, let's see if I can open it up. It is maybe a one mil gap to make this level in the middle. So if you're rushing, like I said, or you're trying to do it fast, that one mil gap is irrelevant. It does not matter in the grand scheme of things. So these down underneath, get it to your height of the pipe and then move it out of the way. Base down underneath, get into the height of your pipe, then move it out of the way again. At the start, this is going to be a bit fiddly, but we're going to be able to get it centered in no time. all about playing around with it. I'm looking down the pipe to see the gap at the bottom as well as the gap at the top. I can also use this to help me out too. So when it's touching one side, if I tack on top, I can shim it out, open the gap at the bottom and level this off. But that all just depends on if you've got the bottom of the pipe touching already. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to set the gap at the top and the pipe alignment. This is going to be to one side. I don't usually use this, but I can just for consistency sake and your sake in case you're going to use it. Make sure everything's pretty in line. Five line looks good. While it's hot, pull it open and adjust it with the V-stand. Adjust this one here as well. Level. This one here can go down.
Now I can tack on the new. So this gap was huge and it looks even bigger on camera. I'm using a 3mm spacer and maybe the bottom was 4 or 5mm, maybe even 6 but closer to 5mm. It happens sometimes, these fittings are terrible and the chops sometimes come out crappy, you have to just deal with it. And the pressure of the camera made me rush. Now that's a huge gap underneath, which is why I don't usually like going off of this sometimes because the chop, most times the chop is never level to what the, the side of the, the, the elbow is. Now, I want the measurements to be bang on. So here's the drawing. So, center to center measurement of the two elbows is 2,106. You saw on the first one, I used the level to level it off. This one here, I'm just gonna go by measurements to make sure the measurements are bang on. And then, if my fabrication skills are good, this will be level and um, the measurements will be bang on. But even if this is slightly off, I'll prefer this off and the measurements bang on than anything else. So, 2,106 mil, 2,109 mil. So this needs to go in a few mil. Hammer and wedge. Two thousand one hundred and six mil. I would say that's pretty bang on. So I'm gonna tack the inside. No, I'll tack this side because we've got the shim, so I can't do. Or I would have had the gap at the top even smaller and then grind, use the grinder to open it up. 